back to my channel learn smart coding in this video we're going to see how to build a custom validator in reactive forms you might have used the inbuilt validator so far and i'm going to show you how to build your own custom validator for your own requirement come let's get started so this is the demo app this is basically angular getting started demo app i have the whole code in the github repository you can always go and check there now we'll focus on creating an item and then i'll show you how to build a custom validator over there so I am on this menu where I have an option to do a create food menu. So these are the listed items. So when I click on this create food menu, in this we have a form where we have a name, description, price, category and cosign that to be added. And right now the form is built using the reactive forms and there is no validation as such, meaning there is no required validation. So I'm going to open up my developer tool and go to the network, clear up all the logs and show you what happens. I don't have the validators and if I click on save, it is going to throw me some error from the external API. So in this app, I've already handled the backend API error. If a backend API error throws 400 error data, bad data, I have already handled that in the application, but we will focus on creating the custom validator and show you how to stop that or how to prevent it on the front end itself. So you see, I triggered a call because of no validation. I received a 400 error back. So you see all the dummy data in the payload was sent. That's why API stopped me saying, hey, name is not correct. Description is not correct. It should be of minimum some length. Nothing was received. That is why we got a 400 response, right? Now let's keep that in a second place, meaning API will always validate, but at the front end, we, if we know what needs to be validated, we can validate at the front end itself instead of firing any API. Now that is what we're going to see. So these errors that you're seeing up, these are all because of handling the backend error properly. You, you can watch more in detail when in my reactive form course, but let's focus on building the custom validator. I'm going to go to that component foot create component and in the component you can see the form was built with only the name description price and other properties there are no validators as such so where do you add the validators so if you consider a name property after the value you are here you can put a validator so validators dot these are the available inbuilt validators like max email minimum length maximum length all those things right so these are all out of the box you can use it but we will focus on a couple of uh, important uh, validators and i'll show you how a customized validator for a price will look like come let's build it first so i'm going to go to the servers and create a new file called custom validators.ts let's build that Right click, new file, custom validators. So let's build a class and export that. So export class and a class name called custom validator. So here, what we are going to do is, here we are going to write some method which will have our custom validator. So before we do anything there, come here for a moment. And if you put a comma next to the value, it will tell you what is the validator. You see the second argument is basically a validator which can be a validator function or an array of validator function, right? Or an abstract control options or null or undefined. We are going to build methods, a function, which will return validator function as the return type. That is how we will build a validator, custom validator. Let's switch back to this file. Let's build a static function. So static required. Required is the name of the custom validator. So which accepts an error message. So meaning here I can write my own customized error message in case if I have to show some error. So which will accept an error message of type string or it could be a null and the default value is null which will return a validator function. Right. That's why the error is showing up. Now this is the first skeleton of your method. Now what we need to do is this method should return a function of type validator function. And this interface, we are going to implement it. So what we are going to do, we will say return. So we are going to implement this validator function as a return type. So the validator function accepts a control of type abstract control. 
okay and then that returns a type called validator error so it returns a validation error or a null and this is a code block where you write your logic so this is the place you you determine a logic and you return it is an error or not okay so now let's build it so i'm going to create another function quickly to see is empty input value i'm going to build a function called is empty input value which will accept a value of type any and we are going to check the condition and return a boolean property so what it is going to check and it is going to check the value is null or the value of length equal to equal to zero which means they have not done anything the input is like empty okay so we are going to check that so here what we will do return is empty input value so we'll put this method let's rename this method into a proper one empty e capital letter so now we have done that so here we pass in the control value okay control value is nothing but the control whichever control we are putting it let's for example name or description the value of that control so we pass in the value of the control to this method and check whether it is true or false if it is true we are going to return a object of a method if this is true we are going to return an object which is of type error if not we simply return a null so what do we return in this return so we return two properties one is required and we will set that property as true and then we return a message property within that object and that we set as error message if the error message is not sent from the caller we will fall back to a default one that's why there was an or operator okay on line number 15 so here what i can do is i can write if the error message was not sent i will simply say field is required okay so you can hard code it here or what we can do is we can write some custom uh, you know validator message here like static message and then there are like five properties these properties we can reuse it so let's avoid hard coding let's use this message property and then send if the field is required okay let's format the code control a control f k we formatted it back to the form now we are going to implement the custom validator here so put a comma add a custom validator let's bring in the namespace control period will prompt you what you need to add so now we are calling the required okay so we added a required validator now let's check how it works so back to the demo let's do this click on save you did not do anything you clicked on save you see there was no outgoing call the form was not valid it stopped calling a external api now the field is required came because you did not pass any custom message that's why it took the field is required from this line number eight now let's say let's put some custom message which is optional right you can always do based on your form so you might have many forms in your project based on which control you wanted to send a custom message you can do it based on the requirement so let's do this so i have put enter foot name to proceed okay that's a custom message it's reloading it let's let's see what happens now i clicked on save you see enter foot name to proceed is the message that was prompted here okay so very nice right so let's do a couple more thing in the custom validator and see how beautiful it is so we have a custom validator already called required what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another custom validator which is going to be exactly same but it's a different one the second one that we are going to add is the min length so in min length it will accept what is the length minimum length that is required again the second parameter is the error message if you see the structure of this min length static method this is exactly same as how we built for the required one also so this will accept a minimum length and the error message as the input in which the error message is optional minimum length you have to pass it and it is going to do some validation so we are going to build a logic here so the next logic that we are going to do is we are going to see whether the value is null or not okay if it is not null only we will validate it if it is null we send a null okay now the next one is here is the logic so what we are going to do is we are going to take the control value okay 
and then if we check the length and then assign a length property there now if the length is less than the minimum length let's say the minimum length is 3 and uh, someone passed uh, only one character okay now the length validation will have true in it right so 1 less than 3 is going to be true now if this is true which means there is an error we need to send a message an error message back to the control so we build min length as the property and inside that we send two things required length and the actual length the required length is the one that we passed in into the control and then the actual length is what was found in the characters like you know whatever was typed in the input if not we will send a null if the value was true we send the error message now let's format the code so we have formatted the code this is how the min length works and what we are going to do is so now similar to how we built the min length we are going to build a max length also this is exactly same just the logic inside the condition is different if the length is greater than the max length we will send this as an error okay now let's put both of these into this name property so if you have to add more than one validator it has to be an array of validator so i've opened up an array and then pass in these first validator and then second validator is the min length same i want a minimum of five characters to be entered and then i can also pass in some messages for now let's stick to the default message that the controller the custom validator will throw okay so i added a minimum length of 5 and a maximum length of 100 let's save this format the code go back to the demo and see how that looks for the name property back to the demo so now if i enter save see the first one is the required property kicked in so the foot name came as soon as I start typing, the second validator kicked in and said, hey, you need to enter at least five. Let's try this. See, this is the validation uh, you know, flow. First one kicks in, the second one kicks in, and where is the third one kicks in? Third one will kick in when there is more than 100 character. And this is how the default message was formatted. Okay, the five and the 100. Now you can pass in a custom message also. So here I'm overriding the message and passing at least five characters are required in the food name, name of the food. Okay, that is what my custom message is. So let's add that. Let's copy this and put it into the maximum also and change this five characters to the maximum of 100 characters. So we say maximum of 100 characters are allowed for the food name. Save it, go back to the demo, let it load. If you hit on save now the first one kicked in the second one is like five character c the custom message came and you as you type more than 100 it will validate and give you the third validation message see you got the third validation message so one shot you are able to show more than one validation message with different verbiages this is what company generally ask for okay now we know how to build this now let's put this together into the description also now let's add a similar validation what we have done for the name let's copy paste for the description and quickly change the required content for the description like the minimum is 100 the maximum is 5000 so validations are same for both the fields it's just the different verbiage let's quickly do that all right now you can see validations for both happening so if i start typing it shows different validation message now we need to implement for the price let's go back to the code and let's go into the custom validator so i'm going to copy paste a custom validator called greater than basically it's going to accept a value and it will determine whether the value is greater than that value or not so that we can set a price tag minimum of five dollars for example so any food item that is supposed to be created should be of minimum of five dollars or any number that you pass so here coming back to the form control add that custom validator dot greater than and pass in the minimum or the maximum that you wanted to set so five is what i'm going to set and i'm going to pass in a custom message so the custom message is price of food should be minimum of five dollars that is what because five is always interchangeable you can pass anything based on the form now i have set that now if you hit a save you see 
this is also validated now i don't want any item to be created or i don't want any food to be sold out less than five dollars so if you enter anything less than five or five it's going to throw you error and six is greater than five it accepted it now let's fill up all the information quickly you can see different error message coming and going and list and let's just copy paste something in the food description so i wanted to put as 100 characters so i'm going to copy paste the same thing it's just a demo don't worry about any of the content here the concept is all about how the validation works so let's put everything there everything went successfully i was able to create a record and that record was success i got to not one which is created as the status code that i got let's go to all food and see that item was created or not scroll down all the way down scroll all the way down and you can see the last item which was created and that was of six dollars great now i hope you enjoyed this video you know now how to build a custom validator based on your requirement and that's it for the custom validator i hope you can build your own custom validator based on the requirement uh, for the different forms and you can reuse that i wanted to show you something on the form so instead of passing a value here you can pass an object so this object contains value for different attributes so value is one of the attribute for an input and you can pass value as foot or like any for example new foot right so this will be put into the control and not only that you should use always this one to set any of the attribute like say disabled attribute you should not do anything disabled attribute you should not add the attribute disabled directly onto the html rather use the attribute here whenever you use reactive form because it will throw you error and it will not be able to manage both the attributes on a different way so let's put this two attribute value and disabled and here i'm going to set some cosine id by default as two and disabled as true so this will set a disabled attribute on the form control you see the name form control and the cosine form control which is of type select both applied with the disabled attribute and the value was set so this is how you need to set do not do the attribute directly on the html whenever you use reactive forms always try to do that through the reactive form controls see you can see in the demo uh, when i opened up that html the disabled attribute was automatically added you should always use in this way i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions put it in the comments and I will be happy to respond to you. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel, like it, share it, comment it and never forget to click on the bell icon.